give it up, Mr. Tony Jiri! Thank you so much. So one of the things I like to do is give away money. Does anybody object if I give away money? I print it up on pads and I give it to people that laugh at my jokes. <laughs> Who's gonna laugh? That's the dollar for you, right? You're laughing, aren't you? That's a dollar for you. And you're kind of funny. So you're kind of funny looking. That's an extra dollar for you. And you have to sit next to this guy, so that's an extra dollar for you, right? Now, who needs some money? Now, did I tell you guys about the upgrades for a minute? I'm going to tell you the story how I met Rob Flick. I got him upgraded, and we got connected. Some people last night said, right, Tracy? Some people said they wanted to be in first class, and these two roles here are business class, but we also give money back here for coach, right? Right? <laughs> yeah, all right, we got to have some money, right? Now, I got so many great things that I want to tell you to, today, and uh, I'm so excited to be here. I've got about an hour and a half. Let me encourage you to take some notes. Everybody grab one of your books, The Results Faster book. I'm going to explain this book in just a moment as I kind of set some things up here. This is my 45th book. Uh, what I found is a lot of times when we have experiences like we have today, we are not as strategic as we could be about taking notes. Let me encourage you, as I'm sharing today, uh, to take good notes. Sometimes you can take notes for yourself, which a lot of people do, but most people don't think about taking notes for their team members, for their spouse, for their kids, for their friends. So if I share something that might be powerful, how many of you have kids that might be powerful for your kids? You might wanna make a note and write that person's name down, your kid's name. So when you're looking back through it, you can remember to share that with your kid. Would that be a good idea? And would you agree that most people are not strategic about taking notes? So in order for us to maximize our time together today, I wanna to kind of set that up right up front, that being able to take good notes is powerful. I encourage you, if you don't have your own note system, and if you do, and I see some of you do when your slates or computers, take notes inside the book. There's a lot of pages in the back, so when you go back to the book, you have those notes. Another thing that I encourage you, if there's a particular action you wanna take, whatever that note is, put a little box next to that note, and you know later on that eventually you gotta put an X in that box and that's an action you gotta take. So sometimes it's a deformity piece, you write that down, and sometimes it's a specific action. Everybody with me on that? We're gonna bring this life, uh, we're gonna bring this book to life. On the back, everybody flip it over. On the back is my 37th book. This book is called Strategic Acceleration. I'm gonna bring that book to life, which is the centerpiece of this entire, this entire book. This book has 26 lessons, 21 lessons in it, and you'll see the little gray box here is clarity, focus, and execution. The number one thing that I can share with you today is clarity, focus, and execution, and I'm gonna bring that to life. I believe the more clear you are, the more pulling power that you get. Do you agree? And I believe the more focused you are, the more powerful results you get. Would you agree? Matter of fact, everybody real quick, just to get us involved, write down, if you would, the number of low leverage activities that you spend in a given, how many hours do you spend on low leverage activities in a given week? And would you mind, uh, Maritza, show them, uh, before we jump into the slides, would you mind jumping over and show them our model on how time works? So I'm gonna go in and out of script today. Uh, so as we're asking questions and kind of having a, an engaging kind of experience, I'm gonna, uh, my team's gonna be helping me pull some things up from time to time. You're welcome to take some pictures and I'll tell you more about that in a minute. This particular model here is on time. Most people don't realize this question. Look around the room when I ask this question, all right? Everybody look around the room when I ask the question. Raise your hand if you can tell me without calculating how many hours in a given week. Raise your hand if you know without calculating. Look at that, 5% of the room, 3% of the room knows. Most people don't know there's 168 hours in a week. Write that one down, 168 in a week. Everybody agree? No objection to that, 168 hours in a week. Now, how many hours should we sleep? Eight hours a day times seven is 56 hours. So put down minus 56 if you would. So we should sleep for 56. And should we take a shower? We should take a shower. So maintenance, you can put down 12 hours for maintenance. That's brushing our teeth, taking a shower. We should brush our teeth too, right? And so we got maintenance. I just rounded the numbers. I make up, of course, and fix your hair. That's right. But you know I don't say hair because some people don't have hair. So I don't say that. Now, I know that's just a few people, but sometimes when I say brush your hair, people are looking at me like, dude, come on, I don't have any hair. Now, I had a hair transplant, so I understand what it's like not to have hair, but I'm gonna tell you, I've had a lot of things done to New teeth, new eyes, new hair. I do it all, right? Okay, here we go. 168 minus 56 minus 12 equals, ready? 100. And generally speaking, people take about half of that 100 hours 
and they invested in their personal lives and about half of that time in their professional lives. If they like what they're doing professionally, they'll overlap and they'll do even more professionally. Would you agree with that? Now the question that I'm asking now is of that 100 hours, how many hours do you invest or spend in low leverage activities? Everybody write that number down and show your neighbor. Let's be real now. We are being transparent. I'm going to be transparent too. Thank you, Maritza. We can go back over to the other slides. All right, someone in the back, yell a number out. How many hours? We got some extroverts in here. How many hours? 20, 25? How many had about 20? Look around the room. That's the average. I ask this question all over the world. Some people had 15, some people had a higher number. It, a lot of it depends on how you interpret the question. Would you agree? So here's the point. There's a lot of hours that we invest or spend in low leverage activities. One of the things I'm going to talk to you about on how to really propel your real estate business, including your EXP business, is how to really spend your time more impactfully. Would that be a good thing? I started writing my first book on time management over 20 years ago, and that book's called How to, how to Gain 100 Extra Minutes a Day. How many like to have that book free? Should we give away a lot of free things, Tracy? We should, shouldn't we? So Maritza and Reagan, Maritza, can you come around and say hi for a minute? Reagan, this is my team. Everybody say hi to my team. So when we show up, uh, as Randy said, our goal is to create an experience, not just give a keynote ex address, okay? So I'm hoping today would be a day that you forever remember. Pat, the first day that you came to the studio, do you remember that day? It'll be forever in your mind, would you agree? What's that? Never, right, and that's what I want it to be for everybody here. When I have the opportunity to be able to put my time in front of your time and we connect, I really want it to be more than just a guy's got slides and he's written a bunch of books and he's kind of funny, or I hope you laugh. By the way, we're not giving away enough money, are we? God, forget about that. See, here's the thing, I'm not very funny. I went to the comedy gym years ago and they told me, if you just pay people, they'll laugh at you. I was like, that's easy, right? right? I tried to be funny, I wasn't very funny, and they just said, just pay people, right? You're always looking sharp, man, look at that. Looking good, man. This guy looking good, man. How you guys doing? How late did you guys stay out there last night? No? I was out there pretty late. I got this morning. Did, did you have a good time at my place? Absolutely. Tell everybody. Did we have a good time? Change your life. Change your life. Tell us about it. Let me get the mic. <laughs> what do you remember about it? Whatever you want to say. Be, tr be transparent. Let's give him a hand. Give him a hand for volunteering. I was told I wasn't going to be speaking at this event. <laughs> so He's starting the dollars now. He knows yeah, how it works. Let's get some when you money. get everybody else to laugh, you get money too, all right? So, I mean, I've, I've always had pretty good growth at EXP. Um, Pat invited me to come to your, your, your place, uh -huh. at your house. And really, it just clarity. It, it, it took away a lot of my fear. Okay. And, and when I went back. How many back, like to have your fear go away? Clarity's powerful, it is. So I'm looking to, you know, hit a benchmark and get back up to your place here soon. Oh, great. You know, to really launch my whole team, but it, it, it was life-changing, and I, and I appreciate it. You bet, man. Let's give a hand. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so to get us started here, the point I want to make is a lot of people don't spend or invest time the best way they could. A big part of what I want to talk about today is how we invest our time. I've got about 10 minutes of setup though, because guess what? I believe that if you're gonna really take advice from somebody, you kinda of need to know who they are. Would you agree? And in fact, I wrote a whole book on that. Can you show them the book I wrote on that? Do you have a copy of that book called Advice Matters? I, uh, I've had the same coach for 31 years. That's a long time to pay a guy for 31 years to, to keep pouring into you. Anybody had a coach for 31 years? Like I believe if you're gonna have a, if you're gonna be in the coaching business, you should be coached as well. So you live what you teach. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So I've had the same guy for 31 years. I also have a lot of mentors. How many of you have a mentor? How many need a mentor? Write that one down. There's an action to take. Put a little box by it. How many should have like 15 mentors? I have about 15 mentors. I have mentors for my health. I have mentors that help me raise my kids. I have business mentors. And this guy here, um, can you show a picture of Jay also? Uh, Jay and I wrote this book a couple years ago. And this guy, I meet with him uh, on Sunday afternoons, uh, usually two times a month, sometimes three, 
and I sit down in his barn and, uh, and I go over all my business opportunities and issues and he's, uh, he's almost 80 years old. Here he is, this is Jay. Let me tell you the story about Jay. I meet this guy in my studio and across the, uh, the table is this guy I'm working with. He says, well, I've got this partner that's been my partner for 30 years and he lives right behind you. I'm like, dude, he doesn't live behind me, the Phillips live behind me. He goes, no, he lives right behind you. And he's like, been my partner for 30 years, he lives right behind you. And I'm like, the Phillips live behind me. <laughs> no, no, he lives right behind you, right over there. I'm like, okay, maybe he does. Come to find out, he says, he's just like you, only 25 years old, or 20 years older. You need to, you need to meet that guy. It just so happened that, that Jay owned the 200 acres behind me. He sold the Phillips 30 acres, so he lived behind the Phillips, but he really did live behind me. It was just the Phillips were between us. So come to find out that he was the guy that developed some of the property behind it. So I go over to meet the guy, and, I, and I'm like so excited, and I, and I take my legal pad, and I lay my legal pad down. I have about 15 things to, uh, to talk to him about, so I'm taking my legal pad in, and I walk in, and he hits a button, and a light from the ceiling comes down, a chandelier comes down, and it turns into that table. That table right there, it turns into that table. And on that table is etched 21 different logos. And uh, this guy has developed and or built 21 different companies. 20 of them were plain logos and one of them had a cloud and a lightning bolt because he lost millions on that one. So 20 he made millions on and one he lost millions on. I'm like, this dude is amazing. So I put my flip chart down, I mean, I put my legal pad down, which is a mini flip chart to me, and it had about 15 things. He reaches over and he has a legal pad just like mine. And he flips it down and said, I want to meet you, and here's my list. I was like, here's two men that hadn't even met, and they got 15 things they want to talk to each other about. This guy's become my best mentor. Three years into our relationship, I said, Jay, a lot of people want to find mentors. Would you agree? I said, we need to write a book about mentorship. He's like, okay. And I said, why do you mentor me and so much? You give me free time. And he says, because you take action. He says, most people don't take action. You see, when someone gives you your time, they want you to go do something with it. And every time I leave his place, I send him a text of all the things he taught me and the things that I'm going to do. And the next time I meet with him, I tell him what I did. And he's like, nobody does that like you do. So I'm going to pour into you because I want to feel good because when someone mentors you, what they're after is what? Ego. They want to feel good. Maslarkey's hierarchy of needs. You guys know about that? you got five basic needs, right? And when you start getting into that ego and super ego, you want to pour into other people. So I said, let's write a book. I said, Jay, what, would that, what should that book be? I said, it should be about mentorship. Would you go back over now to the book? And I said, mentorship is only one part of it. I said, um, I said, we need to talk about how to hire a coach, how to work with a trusted colleague. Like, how do you learn from Pat? How do you learn from Randy? How do you learn from, from Scott? How do you learn from, from Tracy? How do you learn from Rob? How do you learn from different people? So we wrote a whole book, and I think we should give everybody that book too, shouldn't we? I mean, might as well, right? I mean, I mean, I'm thinking that we need to give you some stuff, right? Like, we gotta, we've not got to exceed expectations. Like, how many people show up and say, I've written 57 books, and I wish you'd read them all? And I'm going to give them to you if you want them, huh? Like, how many people do that? Not very many people. Would you agree? Right? I still got a house payment, too. I need to sell some books. <laughs> I'm going to give them to you, and you guys help me sell them, all right? How about that? All right, let's go back to our slides. So I got two freebies so far, and my team's going to help me take notes. So I got some slides that I got set up. Remember I told you I'm going to spend some time or invest some time in our setup. So my first slide that I want to say from a setup standpoint is social media everything. Anything that you find that's appropriate that you're filming or you want to take a picture of my slides today, you're welcome to, do, to, to, to grab that for your own self and, and be able to share it any way that you can socially. We certainly want to fall in the guidelines of EXP. Uh, Glenn's a friend of mine and I've uh, committed to him and everything that I'm doing in terms of training or touching anybody in EXP that will follow the guidelines and obviously we want to be able to protect the company and the company's brand. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. That's important. Would you agree? Because we really do have a model here that is really exceptional. It's unlike any model I've ever seen in my life. I've worked for many companies, over a thousand companies in 50 something countries and I've never seen a model like EXP. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, so please social media anything that you find appropriate and within the guidelines. Let's talk about Rob and Jim. Two of my favorite people in the world. Can you see that little ticket right there? Let me tell you about that. So if I stand up, you guys can see me better in the back. I'm going to stand up a little bit. So here I am in New York about a year and a half ago in September. 
My wife doesn't travel with me much. I, I wish she would more. She's a retired flight attendant. She's been in 6,000 been in 6,000 flights, so she doesn't travel as much as I'd like her to. One day she says, hey, let's go for a trip. I go, hey, you wanna go to Las Vegas, New York, where do you wanna go this weekend? And so we flew to New York. I'm jogging around New York City, and it's great, great, great. I go back to the, to the airport after three days, have a good time, and I'm about to get on a plane. Guy comes running over to me, doo -doo -doo -doo, says, hey, you're Tony Jerry. I said, yeah, man, you look at Tony Jerry. I am Tony Jerry. Hey, I've been reading your book for two weeks. I've been in Russia for two weeks. Been reading your book for two weeks. It goes yellow, 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 highlighted. Oh my gosh, this book's so good. Oh my gosh, my son, you're his favorite speaker. Oh my gosh, this, oh my God, would you sign my book? Now, when you're really smart at communicating, what do you do when you first meet somebody? Let me teach you this, this is what I say. You know this. What do you say? You say, compliments are a good thing. I say, tell me about you. Should you do that? Like, do you want to like, blab about yourself? Or do you want to find out about your prospect, your friend, your potential friend, your neighbor, tell me about you. Like how many people like use those words as much as you should? Write that one down. Tell me about you and they start talking, say tell me some more, right? You wanna be smart in communication. Oh, you know how many mistakes I've made in my life by not listening? Oh my gosh, talk about mistakes. Have I told you about all my mistakes? I've been embezzled, I've been fat, I've been sued. I mean, I got a lot of mistakes, man, I got a lot. And one of the mistakes I made, I spent a year and a half to get a guy to fly into my studio. I'm going to sign this big, giant contract, and I don't listen. And the guy says, I can't hire you because we're hiring you to teach people how to communicate, and you don't even listen. He tricked me. He got, got me talking. I was like, oh, my God. It's dumb. Make sure you listen. Anyway, so he said, I said, tell me that. He says, well, I'm, the no I'm going to shorten it now. I'm the number one recruiter for, uh, for Keller Williams. It's really a number one recruiter. I said, well, I happen to coach the number one money earner for Keller Williams. Oh, yeah, I trained him, uh, Linda and Jimmy. I said, really? Number one. And he says, also, there's a new company. I'm the number one recruiter for them. I said, what's the new company? He said, EXP. I said, I hadn't heard of EXP. He said, number one. Number one of two companies. I said, that's pretty amazing. Six minutes later, he sits down. Signs book sits down. I look over at him and his wife, and they're kind of like sad. And I'm thinking, if you're the number one recruiter for two companies, how could he be sad, right? But they're kind of like sad, and I'm thinking, why are they sad? So I walk over to them and I say, hey, you guys are looking a little sad. Well, we've been flying for 23 hours. We've been in Russia and traveling around. And I said, you're not traveling first class back to Dallas. Well, no, we had first class, but not this last leg. And I go, hand me your boarding tickets. They said, huh? I said, would you hand me your, your, your boarding tickets? They've known me for six minutes, right? I said, just hand me your boarding tickets. <laughs> I need the tickets. This is the truth, promise. I take the tickets right over to the gate agent, and I said, I got some friends. Do you think you could upgrade my friends in first class for me? Oh, Mr. Jerry, you know, you know, you've already upgraded your wife. You can only upgrade one person. You know, you know the deal. I said, could you just type my name in your system and just see what you could do? Now, American Airlines has been a client of mine for 20 years. I helped develop the system. I know how it works. I know what they're going to say about me. There's a shot. I'm nice, right? So I go back and I hand the tickets to him and I said, hey, probably, but you don't know, right? Two minutes later, their names pop up on the screen. Mr. Miss Flick, please come up, get your new tickets. They walk up, hand them tickets. Now I've known them for eight and a half minutes. And they're like going, dude, my son thinks you're a cool speaker. I love your book and you've given me free first class tickets to Dallas. This is working out pretty good so far. So I'm sitting in five, they're in three with my wife. I look at them about an hour later, I'm thinking, dude, it's like the number one recruiter. Like, I, I, like, love cool people that do stuff. So I go up, tap him on the shoulder, I say, hey, Rob, I need to be your coach. He starts shaking a little bit. So, <laughs> what I didn't realize is Jen is kicking him under the table. Yes, yes, we talked about you coaching. He, say, he, say, he told me later, he's like, I know how expensive you are. If I said yes, it's going to be my credit card. So, I was, he's like, okay. So I told him my fee, he's giving me the credit card. He comes in a week later and he sits down. And the first thing I tell him, I said, dude, you gotta go to, we gotta go after risk mitigation. He's like, risk mitigation? He's like, no, we gotta grow this thing. I'm like, dude, it's already growing. I said, we gotta understand Glenn and we gotta make sure that this thing stays really nice and tight and we don't have problems. And he's like, wow, you're right. We need to make sure, I mean, because this, is this model powerful? Pat, is it powerful? Did it change your life? Right? Where's Angel at? Did it change your life? 
I mean, we sit and talked about it six months ago in my studio, right? Change your life. I mean, the model's incredible. Glenn has created something here that is unlike anything I've ever seen. Unbelievable. Anyway, so they go, oh, great day, great, great day, great day. Oh, we got to bring our team. Oh, my gosh, this is so good. We got to bring our team. We got to bring our top people, right? So, what was it, two weeks later, Tracy, we're there. Got 12 of the top people sitting around my studio, and we're doing what I'm about to share with you as, as, a, as a briefing. And, oh, my gosh, so good. He goes, man, I got I to have everybody on my team have this. So he made a deal that basically once you get to a certain level, then you can bring your top people, come in my studio, and I'll pour into your top 12 people. And when we have events like this, I show up to be able to pour in to everybody that's part of EXP. What do you think of that? Pretty cool? So I, I asked Rob, can you tell me what you'd like me to reinforce this morning? And he said this. For 2019, this is a quote from his text, I'd really like you to reinforce personals. That really having people really not just say, how do I build this large team, but how do I really keep personally uh, attracting the right people into our organization? So I'll set that up. Um, uh, having that come from him, and I'm going to continue to reinforce it. So the message I'm going to give you today is the results faster, the book you have in your hands. I really hope that you send me notes and you say, I read the book and it's like, this changed my life, this helped me. Like, the way the book came to be was this. A friend of mine who I've coached for many years, his name is Stuart Johnson, owns Success Magazine. I write a column for success. I helped him when he bought success. I coached him before he bought success. And uh, he and I have been friends for 15 or 20 years. And he called me up about four years ago and he said, I think we should do a electronic course, a video course on your best material. So we hired the IP, the, 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 the primary IP lady from Tony Robbins. Her name was Pam Henderson. And we hired her, she'd with, been with Tony for about 20 years, to come take my first 44 books and to summarize them and put them into this course. And the wheel on the back, or the little bullseye on the back, is what we came up with. So there's basically seven pieces, or what we call modules. Each module has three lessons, uh, a total of 21 lessons. And so in the video course, we made uh, 21 20-minute clips. Has anybody taken my course, taken the course? It's a very, very powerful course. It's about 20 minutes each. And it's, at that time, it's the best of anything that I'd written. Today, I'm going to give you the highlights of it, okay? Results faster. Um, to get started, though, I got a little video that I think would put a little excitement in the room. Let's take a look at this little video, Maritza, kind of showing this guy. This is... This is all Seer. I just uh, was experimenting with uh, fireworks for Halloween, and I, I think I've perfected the mixture with uh, sulfur, and I'm using some potassium magne magnesium. So uh, I'm going to light this, and it should just sparkle a little bit. I've got this perfected cloth down here. Uh, Actually, I think I'll turn the light out so it shows up better. Okay, let's try this out here. Too much magnesium, I guess. I won't do that again. Sorry about that. So, we want to make sure we have a good plan, right? Got all the ingredients. So, I want to give you some ideas on how to have the best plan. Willie Nelson, I'm coaching the president of Dr. Pepper. Matter of fact, my roommate bought Dr. Pepper. Years ago, uh, I'm building a new building. Can you show them the new building we're building? you have a picture of that, guys? I'm building a new building. You guys got to figure out a way to come to my new building. We've been working on it for about three years now, and uh, it's called the Results Center. Uh, my wife and I made a deal that we would work out of my home 
for 20 years. And um, my, my, my roommate, roommate here, he's building his family office here, and then I'll have my strategy session here, and then we'll be able to house and do parties of about 250 people on top. So it's gonna be pretty phenomenal. Uh, my partner, Jack, as I said, he bought Dr. Pepper in 1988. Anyway, let's go back to, to the president at the time was sitting across the table from me, and he says, uh, Tony, I met Willie Nelson about a week ago, and Willie tells me he shoots Par Goff, and I said, Par Goff, Willie Nelson, doesn't seem to calculate, probably gonna tell me a joke, I look at his face like this, or make an eye contact, he says, no, I really met Willie. Willie tells me he shoots Par Goff, but he also went on to say this, he said, Willie owns his own ranch, and owns his own ranch, he has his own golf course, therefore he sets his own par. <laughs> now I know you've heard that before, right Pat? It's like the 19th time Pat's heard it, like I heard that. And it makes a point though, here's the point, look what's on the screen, we all have our own level, so we can set our own par. So today, as you're hearing me, you can go, hey, this guy's kind of a funny guy, you might like me, might not like me, or you can sit there and say, dude, if this guy's got something that the number one recruiter in our entire company has hired me to be his coach for life, right, Rob has, and he's invited me to be here, maybe you say, hey, maybe I want to be open-minded to be able to pour into my own mind. How about this, on a one to 10, how open are you today? Yeah. Pretty big number? All right, let's, let's write this one down to get us started. Here we go, two numbers. In the last year, how many hours did you intentionally spend or invest in making yourself better? Approximately. Approximately. How many hours? This is watching videos, this is reading books, this is being mentored, this is being, and I applaud you for being here today and tomorrow for being at events where you can like really, really uh, expand your thinking. So, number of hours. The second question is how much money did you invest in yourself to be a better person in the last year? This is to be a better parent, to be a better friend, to be a better realtor, to be a better EXPer, to be a better whatever relationships, whatever roles you play in life, to be better. And then show your neighbor for a minute and talk to him about it. Just a quick 30 seconds with your neighbor. Show your neighbor. Like when you write your goals down, please write this down. I didn't have this planned in. We might be able to squeeze it in. Let me give you a little prelim. I am a goal setting freak. Like. I have 150 pages of goals. That's a lot of goals, isn't it? My coach about 15 years ago, he says, uh, he says, Tony he says, uh, there's a guy out there that has more goals than you do. I said, oh man, I got depressed. I said, more than me, I've been working for 20 years to have like binders full of goals. Nope, this guy at the time had about 50 pages. And he says, this guy has 75 pages of goals. I said, oh my gosh, how do I deal with this? He's like, I can get you a copy of them. I was like, really? So he gets me a copy of a copy, and I'm looking through this guy's goals, and I'm like, would you put up a picture of Peter Thomas? And Pat, put up the little video of him and I on his yacht last year. And so I, uh, I start seeing this guy's goals are so tied to his values, and his values are the same as mine, I'm thinking, I'll just borrow some of his goals. <laughs> He's already thought through where to travel, and what to do, and what to experience. I'm thinking, yeah, this guy's got it down. There's Peter there. Stop, hold it for just a second before we play it. That's Peter. So, 15 years ago, I get this guy's goals. I take a lot of his goals, put it into my goals. Now I got like 100 pages. Now I got 150, but at the time 100. So I got more goals than he does, so I'm feeling good. 10 years goes by. Five or six years ago, the dude sends me a text or email Saturday morning, 8 11. Tony, I know you don't know me, but that book, Strategic Acceleration, that's the most fantastic book I've ever seen. I'd like to buy 100 of them so every one of my friends can have one. Now, what he doesn't know is I've been living his goals for 10 years, <laughs> and that book's really his book. <laughs> Pretty crazy, right? Pretty crazy. So then I say, I go in to read, and he goes, hey, I want to start this new company. And uh, by the way, this is a guy built Century 21 across all of Canada, 400 locations, when he was 30-something years old and sold out for $50 million. The EO, the Entrepreneurs' Organization, that started in 1987, he was a co-founder of EO. The guy is unbelievable. In Arizona, how many from Arizona? He built the Four Seasons in Arizona. I mean, the guy's unbelievable. He says, I also want to write a book with you. I know you've written a lot of books. I've only written one. I'd like to write a book with you. Anyway, he says, I'd like you to think about being in business with me. Think about maybe being my coach. Call me if you're interested. I'm so interested. I'm like, for three or four hours, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like, Incredible. So I call him in the afternoon, I don't know, one o'clock or so. 
Five minutes into the call, let me get my wife on the line. We talked for three and a half hours, three and a half hours, and uh, he invites me up to his yacht. Uh, I flap on his yacht, and he, and he challenged me on the phone calls before we got there, could we write a book before Christmas? And this is like October. And to write a, publish a book in 60 days is not easy. You can do it, I've done it, I've got 57 of them, I have my own publishing company. So I surprise him, and I bring my ghostwriter with me. And we like jump on his yacht and we start working on the book. And an hour later, he's like, you gotta be my coach for life. This is like Rob, be my coach for life. So every six months or so, I go and I see him. Can you play the video? take his, and I coach him on his uh, bicycles. So we're working out and training. We mastermind up at the top. Are oh, you can stop it. And, and he and I have refined goal setting down and I'd like to give you, uh, th that was a setup for this. There, here's your value. Five things when you set your goals. Number one, write down what you want to have, which most people do. I want to have a big house. I want to have a cool place to live. I want to have a cool car. Most people got the have down, but they don't go and write down what they want to experience, share, and give. Those are the three in the middle. So one's have, two share, one's give, one's experience. So one is have, share, give, experience, and perhaps the most important one is to become. Who do you want to become? Do you want to become one of the top attractors in EXP? Do you want to become a person that people look up to to be able to influence your life? Do you want to become a great mentor? What do you want to become? Do you want to be How many of you, are, are, maybe you already are, how many of you really are the president of your kid's fan club? And now remember this, this is not a, or don't remember this, here's the point. You don't commission yourself, you earn that. So you gotta go to your kid and say, is my mom or dad really the president of my fan club? Like you earn that, would you agree? It's not like I put the badge on and that's me. You gotta freaking earn it, right? My kids are 22 and 25 and I shut down my entire business model. I had an office in China, LA, Detroit, and Dallas to work out of my home for 20 years to pour into my kids. Now, my wife's like, go make some more money and so I'm gonna go build the machine and I'm gonna go and grow and build a, 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 a giant deal again. Not real giant, but bigger. The point I'd like to make to you is personally when I get a chance to touch people, um, is this. Last year I read the most profound book of the year that I'm going to give you. It's called How Will You Measure Your Life? And it was the most profound book for me because I really had to do some soul searching on how I measure my life. And I was already pretty clear, right? 150 pages of goals. I got more clear. And how I measure my life is how many people I, in, I positively impact their lives. So today I want to positively impact your life not just to grow your EXP business, not just to sell more real estate, to be a better person. How about that, guys? Be a better person. Is that good? Oh, yeah. And one of the big pieces to the puzzle of goal setting is you first off define your goals, excuse me, define your values before you define your goals. So then you write down what you want to have, share, experience, give, and become in alignment with what you value. A lot of people skip that step. The good news is all the answers in the book. Turn over to about page 46 to page 50. In this particular version, it's going to be 46, 49, or 50. Tell me what page, if you would, Tracy, what page is the, the values on? There's a list of 60 values. 48? 48. 48? So page 48, you might, you might kind of fold that page down. There's 60 values there. We're not going to do it today. We don't have time. I encourage you to go through and pick out 10 values. And as you're writing your goals, as a result of our time together today, make sure they tie to your values. Okay? Okay, Willie Nelson says, set your par, where do you want to become? What's your par? How good of EXP do you want to be? Do you want to be like Pat? Like Pat sat down and he like took notes and studied when he was in the studio, remember that Pat? And the dude's like, I'm soaking this baby up, right? Like, it's just like amazing. How about Gene last night, was that cool? His three Ps? I'm texting this morning, I'm like, dude, three Ps, you nailed it. Did he nail it? His three Ps? Okay, thinking. Such a powerful concept. How many, 
how many of you need to do some more thinking? Like my, my president, anybody a Zig fan in here, a Zig Ziglar fan? So I, um, I hired Zig Ziglar's son-in-law, his former president, to be my president. Here's the story. 1994, I'm flying to Detroit. I happen to invest uh, five and a half years of my life from 1991 to 97 to help turn around Chrysler. Lee Iacocca left in 91, right? Left in 91, and it was like, and I got a little chance to have a little contract, and a couple years later, they paid me a couple million a year, and pretty soon, I was coaching the president of every uh, country around the world for Chrysler. And on the way to Detroit one day, Zig was sitting in the plane next to me with his president, Jim. We got to talking. I gave him the org chart because I had it in my head of what was happening at Chrysler. He was giving a speech that helped him out. He realized that I understood business. He was into personal development. I was into business development. He hired me to help them get into business. We became friends, co-authored a whole series. He and I became very, very close. His son-in-law quit being his president in 2006, two years later, uh, 1996, excuse me, two years later, so met him in 94, 96, uh, son-in-law quits. I go, Jim, please become my president. Nope, won't become my president. Dude, come on, man. Look what you did for Zig. You did that for Zig. You told me how to think. You told me how to think. Badgered him, badgered him, badgered him, badgered him, badgered him. He was my coach for 10 years. In 2006, he says, I'll become your president. 10 years, that's a lot of persistence. What was one of the three Ps last night? You gotta be able to have that patience, don't you, right? You gotta be able to think through that. 10 years later, he says, Tony, I'll become your president. A couple things, first off, we need to find out why people are coming to your backyard and paying you 15, 20, $25,000 a day just to talk to you. It's a good idea, so he calls people. He says, you teach people how to think, and thinking's hard. I said, Jim, think he's not hard. I do teach him to think. Anybody can think. He says, it's hard. I says, no, it's not. And I got to thinking, and I said, man, I'm wrong. Thinking's hard. People don't think enough. Let's write this one down. Two numbers. You ready? What percentage of the time do you think, and what percentage of the time do you do? And the two numbers have to equal 100. You're either doing or thinking. What percentage of the time are you doing, and what percentage of the time are you thinking? Like, I'm netting it out. Pat told me. He's like, be easy on these people. It's like, this is the first time they've seen you. Now, he, like, he's like, he and Angel, they've seen me quite a few times. I can, like, Whoo! he's like, be easy on them. Show your neighbor real quick. Because some of you didn't write it down, did you? Some of you aren't playing, are you? You don't play? <laughs> as pretty as you are, you are to play. Hey, what's your name? What's your name? Yeah. I like your smiles. You stop playing. Thanks for being here. Appreciate the smiles. So how many of you think you need to think more? Raise your hand. Everybody does. You want to be more successful in EXP? You want to be more successful in life? You want to be more successful as a parent, as a friend? Uh, you want to be more successful in your health? You got to think more, right? Like how many of you do this? You like you walk into your pantry, do, 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 and at night you're kind of a little hungry, maybe you had a little cocktail, maybe a glass of wine, and you open up your pantry, and you just start grabbing something to eat. Or you go to the refrigerator and you grab something to eat without much thinking. How many of you like, don't think much about that? Like how many of you don't even think about what's in your pantry and your refrigerator right now? And you got a lot of crap in there, right? Show them Fat Tony, would you? You see Fat Tony? I promise you, I just turned, turned 58 last week. Eight years, eight years ago, I looked at myself in the mirror and I'm like, dude, I am not thinking about my eating. Look at Fat Tony there. Do you think that dude was thinking about eating? He was not thinking about eating. I had a, uh, had a breakfast one morning with a guy. He looked so good. I was like, dude, man, he looks so healthy. So healthy. I said, what's up? He said, well, I learned once you turn 50, it's all about what you eat. I said, I thought it was about working out. He says, no, it's about what you eat. He was wrong. It's really about what you digest. But he got it pretty much right. It's what you eat. And he says, you know that orange juice you just drank? He said, uh, what's the GI? You know what the GI is, that orange juice? I said, I don't know what GI means. He goes, you know glycemic index. Don't know what glycemic index is. He's like, wow. He says, do you know the calorie count of that? Nope, you just had three orange juices, tall glasses, about 250 calories a pop. That's 750 calories before you ate that greasy bacon. I was like, dude, I am not thinking, am I? I was like, I've never even studied the body. Like I thought a hormone was something a woman has when they're 48. I didn't know we have 50 hormones that tell our bodies what to do, right? Like, so I went out and wrote books on that. I suppose you want that too. Show them ultimate health, would you? 
I wrote a whole book. On, matter of fact, I got a new one coming out. You need to have that one too, called Strategic Health. So I wrote, a, I wrote this book called Ultimate Health, and what I did is I went out with 15 different doctors, and I said, how do you transform from someone that doesn't know how the body works, which is me, to someone that can live pretty healthy? And I wrote this book here called Ultimate Health, and I'm going to give it to everybody. But what I realized, and I, what I did, and I had, uh, who endorsed that one? Uh, somebody endorsed it. Uh, who did I get to endorse it? Uh, Troy Aikman endorsed it, as it did the forward on it. And I had two doctors from the Cooper Clinic write it with me. Um, so we'll give everybody a copy of that one. It's really powerful. What I found, though, is I give people so many books, they, they choke and they don't read them. They become squatters. You know what a squatter is? A squatter is someone that gets good stuff and doesn't do squat about it. <laughs> I'm telling you. Pat told me, he says, I'm so sorry we let a few squatters in today. I was like, really? I thought we, I thought we, I thought we had the whole deal down, but some of you are squatters, aren't you? I can't believe I let a few of them in here, Pat. Because you told me, right? You said there's going to be a few that are going to sneak in. And you know what a squatter is? Like, make sure you get it, get it. It's like you go, Tony, you're talking to me. Yep, you're right. But I just don't think I'm going to do squat about it. <laughs> like, you're right, I need to set some more goals. You're right, Tony, you're right, but man, I just don't think I'm going to do squat about it. But some, most of you are, though, right? How many are going to write some more goals? Get more clearer. Pour into your kids more. Love your neighbors more. Be more inspiring. Study more, right? Like, I want to change your life. I don't want you to say, hey, Tony was a good keynoter. Like, that sucks, man. I want you to say, Tony changed my life. He poured into my thinking and said, I can either be a squatter. I was, I was in Mexico a few weeks ago. And I was having a discussion with some people in the military. And they were telling me about the discussion of can't and want. Won't. You won't do something or you can't. Like, I can't stop eating bad foods. No. The answer is I won't. You can if you want to. The won't. So you got to ask yourself, write that one down. Am I a canter or am I a wanter? I won't do it. Right? Or I can't do it. Like, I won't write more goals down. Because you, know, you know why most people don't write goals? They don't know how they work. I mean, how many of you have studied, like for this breakfast, my patent this morning was studying the reticular activating system, the RAS. Can you show them a picture of that, the RAS? Like most of you this morning weren't for breakfast studying the RAS, were you? Anybody studying the RAS this morning? I can't believe it. Pat, you said some of these guys are pretty sharp. Like the RAS is like magic, let me tell you about it. Like you go through life, you don't know about the RAS, then you're not gonna write goals. When you know about the RAS, then you're gonna write goals. Let me tell you how it works. At the bottom of your brain is a set of nerves you can Google it, watch videos on it, you can read medical journals about it, here's the way it works. When you buy a new vehicle, do you see that same vehicle two weeks later everywhere? Two weeks earlier were those same vehicles on the road. Did you see them? And the reason you didn't see them, because you hadn't told your RAS that you were interested in those vehicles. So whatever you tell your brain you're interested in, your receptives, you have five different primary senses, you perceive in those senses whatever you tell your, your, your brain. Watch this one. If you were remodeling an office right now, you would probably know that there's some fluorescent lights, there's some cone lights, uh, there's some can lights, there's some chandeliers in here, uh, there's some sconces, there's some up lights, and there's some different kinds of lights in here. But if you, aren't re if you aren't working on lighting right now in any kind of, kind of construction, you didn't notice all that, did you? Because your brain goes, hey, I'm great, but I'm not great enough to perceive everything that I can. So you only perceive what your reticulator says, come on in. Now I'm simplifying it, of course. So when you write down your goals, and you let things into your brain according to what you want. Pretty powerful, isn't it? Let's show them why goals work. Can you show them that one? You guys want to see my video on it? It's going to be so powerful that you're going to want to show this video to your spouse or friends or kids. It's a three-minute video I developed. Man, we hadn't got started yet. What time did I finish? 12.30? 11.30? How are we doing so far? Watch this video. Three minutes. Why goals work. If we can pop the lights. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Wrote myself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered, and I gave myself uh, five years, or three years, maybe. And, uh, and I, I dated it Thanksgiving 1995, and I put
put it in my wallet and I kept it there and it deteriorated and deteriorated and stuff. And, uh, and uh, but then just before Thanksgiving 1995, I found out that I was going to make $10 million on, I think it was Dumb and Dumber. faster app. I'm going to give you a free app that has my coolest videos on it. So if you like books, I'm going to give you books. If you like videos, I'm going to give you videos. How's that? Is that good? Yeah. Okay, good. What do you think of that video? A mistake I made, don't make this mistake like I did, is I had my act together on writing goals down. Can you show them a copy of my vision board? I have Pat, do I have a powerful vision board? Maybe. Got the vision board deal down. And by the way, I was the squatter on that one. It took me three years to figure that one out. People kept telling me, vision board, vision board, vision board. Three years to get it in my head to do it. What I missed for years, though, was self-talk. I wasn't saying positive things to myself all the time. Most of the time, not all the time. Now, today, I watch it very carefully. And what you say needs to be congruent with what you visualize with what you write down. Would you agree? What you say is so powerful. Here's my vision board today. In the middle, right here, in the middle is uh, a family mission statement. If you've never done a family mission statement, that's a powerful thing right there. Excellent. Uh, my, there's my family. I did that when my kids were four years old. Playing and, and, and having fun, worshiping God, teaching others, walking, and helping others. That's the five things my family does. Uh, this is each of my family members uh, at the time. Uh, we now have a son-in-law and a future son-in-law. Uh, there's my 12 values. Um, each kid's named. One name's a, uh, one's named a champion. She makes champions out of people. The other one, kid's name's a cheerleader. She cheers people on. And we pour that into their brains so they become that. Uh, my kids are sisters. They hug each other, love each other. We're a Christ-centered family. Um, and then I have 12 standards there that I do my best to live by every day. I get up with prayer and all the way down to the list, okay? Uh, do you guys want that PowerPoint too? Yeah. Am I giving all this away? <laughs> Give them the PowerPoint. Hey, do we need to help everybody? Like if you have someone in EXP that's not here today, I want to give you tools that you can give to them. When they join EXP, this whole movement, have you ever seen that movement video? Can we Google that one? Let's see that. See if we can find it. 
Oh my gosh, when we were talking about it last night, I said, God, we got to show that video today. If you've learned a lot about leadership and making a movement, then let's watch a movement happen start to finish in under three minutes and dissect some lessons. First, of course, a leader needs the guts to stand alone and look ridiculous. But what he's doing is so simple, it's almost instructional. This is key. You must be easy to follow. Now here comes the first follower with a crucial role. He publicly shows everyone else how to follow. Notice how the leader embraces him as an equal. So it's not about the leader anymore. It's about them, plural. Notice how he's calling to his friends to join in. So it takes guts to be a first follower. You stand out and you brave ridicule yourself. Being a first follower is an underappreciated form of leadership. The first follower transforms a lone nut into a leader. If the leader is the flint, the first follower is the spark that really makes the fire. Now here's the second follower. This is a turning point. It's proof the first has done well. Now it's not a lone nut and it's not two nuts. Three is a crowd and a crowd is news. A movement must be public. Make sure outsiders see more than just the leader. Everyone needs to see the followers, because new followers emulate followers, not the leader. Now here come two more people, then three more immediately. Now we've got momentum. This is the tipping point, and now we have a movement. As more people jump in, it's no longer risky. If they were on the fence before, there's no reason not to join in now. They won't stand out, they won't be ridiculed, and they will be part of the in-crowd if they hurry. And over the next minute you'll see the rest who prefer to stay part of the crowd, because eventually they'd be ridiculed for not joining. And ladies and gentlemen, that is um, how a movement is made. So let's recap what we've learned. If you are a version of the shirtless dancing guy, all alone, remember the importance of nurturing your first few followers as equals, making everything clearly about the movement, not you. Be public, be easy to follow. But the biggest lesson here, did you catch it? Leadership is over glorified. Yes, it started with the shirtless guy, and he'll get all the credit, but you saw what really happened. It was the first follower that transformed a lone nut into a leader. There's no movement without the first follower. See, we're told that we all need to be leaders, but that would be really ineffective. The best way to make a movement, if you really care, is to courageously follow and show others how to follow. When you find a lone nut doing something great, have the guts to be the first person to stand up and join in. Do you realize we're 10% of KW right now? We're approximately 10% of KW. Think where we'll be in three or four years. And think where you'll be by being an early adopter. Right? It's pretty cool, isn't it? Never seen anything like it. Pretty cool. Okay, let's go back over. Thinking's powerful. Business is a results contest. If you want to have, if you want to have a great business, you've got to have results. That's all there is to it. My philosophy, I've told you, is clarity, focus, and execution. I got a little video, the way I start the whole book out is life's fast. How many of you think life's fast? Now get ready for this video. I spent, no, I invested four months in making the most powerful video I could make on explaining that life is not like this, it's like this. Everybody with me? It's not like this, it's like this. Do you guys agree with that? Check this video out, see what you think of this. It's called Life is Fab.
That's a pretty powerful video, isn't it? Life's fast. If we're going to do well in EXP, if we're going to do well in life, we've got to understand life is fast. This is no longer the way it used to be. Here's the life we live today. We've got Twitter, Facebook's a new yearbook, LinkedIn's a Rolodex, YouTube's TV, everything, right? All kinds of cool stuff on YouTube. I go to sleep at night watching YouTube all the time. Encyclopedia is the Google, like you can answer a question in seconds, right? How about a three-year-old kid who can't get on Google? Look at that guy's face. <laughs> I'm in New York a few months ago. Check this little baby here. Look at that, one years old, playing with Google, man. Check it out. All right, strategic remembering. One of the things that I think to be able to get the most out of my next 45 minutes is we gotta really make sure we set ourselves up to remember. I preached it a little bit at the beginning, strategic note-taking. Have you ever read a great book and then a year later you could hardly remember much about it? It's because you weren't strategic about thinking, about remembering. Here's the way it works. Short-term memory is where most people go. So you have an experience like this and it goes in short-term memory. If you're strategic, it can go to long-term memory and you remember it. A year from now, you remember it. If you're really strategic, it goes into habits, and then you use it. And if you really remember it, it goes into our culture and we build a movement. So it starts off with not just getting stuck in short-term memory. Get your cameras out. There's gonna be eight things you wanna take pictures on. Here we go, it's only 90 seconds. Strategic remembering, check it out. phones right now take pictures like this experience and create an album and we name it this event and you go back and look at it over and over and over. How many have a system for creating albums like that? How many should? Like if you want to have good memory, you want to make sure. Like if you're going down the airport and you see like this cool billboard, don't just go, that's a cool billboard. Pull your phone out, take a picture and save it so you can relive it, reuse it, make it part of your events, share it with your kids, share it with friends, right? Being able to really remember strategically, a lot of people go through life and only stop at short-term memory. They are not strategic about remembering. Matter of fact, you can be strategic about everything. i just finishing up a book right now called Strategic Complaining. <laughs> like, think about this. How many of us have really not studied how to get what you want before you complain? Like, why complain if you haven't even thought about what you want? Like, I'm skiing two weeks ago. I double book myself, very, very seldom happens occasionally. And so I, I had this real expensive place in, uh, in Park Cities. Prepaid, no refunds. I got to back out of a day. It's going to cost me $1,000 to, to back out. So I call the hotel. I have a five step model in this book. You're going to want the book. Give them the book too. You guys want the book? <laughs> By the way, this book you can read. You can read this book in 15 minutes. Is that cool? Like a lot of my books you can read in 12 minutes. Is that even better? In fact, let me tell you, show him, book, show him Bob. I almost gave you Bob today in person. I, saw, I told Pat last night, the next big event, I'm going to give Bob. Bob is so cool. Bob, it stands for Book of Books. 
and it's a summary of my first 50 books. And anything that bombed only got one page, and if it was a bestseller, it got five or six pages. So I thinned out all the things based upon how my followers liked what I did. And I'm gonna give everybody that too, is that cool? So back to strategic complaining. So I call up the guy, and I, I call up the hotel, and if you call, a lot of people don't know that you get reservations. The reservations is outsourced a lot of times, and you gotta figure that out. So I got the guy, and I say, da -da 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 -da, do you have the authority, don't have the authority? Well, you gotta have the authority, or you're like, if you don't ask if they have the authority, that you're talking, they can't do it, then they're gonna, you're gonna waste time. So I go, oh yeah, I got the hotel manager, and then I talk to him, are you really the hotel manager? Oh no, I'm the beverage manager. Well, you can't do it. Well, the hotel manager is busy. Okay, I'll hold. Well, he's in a meeting. That's okay, I'll hold. Look my name up, please. I'd like to talk to him. So pretty soon the operational manager comes on, runs the whole thing. I said, dude, let me tell you what happened. I made a mistake. I overbooked myself, and I need a favor. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you to back off a day and credit me a day, $1,000. And I'm going to buy expensive wine. I'm going to have all my dinners at your place, and I'm going to spend more money than that $1,000 at your place so you can make a profit on me in addition to what I'm asking you to do. He's like, okay, we'll do it. If you don't know how to get to the right person, what to say, and how to make it happen, you don't always get what you want. Would you agree? You're just like whining. Meh, 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 meh. Right? The guy's like, well, what happened? I'm like, dude, it's my fault, not yours, mine. Pause. Not like your fault, right? I admitted it, my fault. Like in the book, you're going to love that book, right? Strategic complaint. You can be strategic about eating. You can be strategic about thinking. I got strategic. What else did I write? Oh, strategic gifting. Oh, my gosh. Show them that book. That just, we just launched that for Christmas. Oh, this is powerful. Strategic. Like how many of you are, are strategic about gifting? Like, man, you got to be smart. Like when you give something to your clients, no, give it to your clients' kids. And they're like, who's that realtor that gave us that? Like when I give these little uh, echoes away, I give them away and I go, hey, this is for your family. Oh my gosh, I, it's so much better than giving it to the person. You go, this is for your family, right? So in the book, Strategic Gifting, John Rubin, cool guy, wrote a book called Giftology. Flip over, do you have the back cover of it? Yeah, look at this. So see, a lot of people do branding, marketing, and sales, but they forget gifting, it's a blind spot, right? You guys are gonna love that book. Man, how much do we charge for this? We gotta charge more. Golly, we're giving away a lot of cool stuff. I'm just kidding. All right, I gotta get to my slides. We gotta get going. Where in the world's my clicker at? Where'd I leave it? Oh my goodness, thank you so much for your help. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna zip through the slides. Speed, life's fast, everybody agrees with that. Okay, life's fast, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, look at this. Some of you in here, this is you. Check this out. This is the guy with no goals. Check him out. Yeah, that's him. He's persistent. He's persistent. Watch him. The dude is persistent. But he's not thinking. He's just doing, right? Oh, my gosh. Surely some of you are going to take a picture of that and remember that. Right? Oh, my God. Look at that dude. I mean, we can keep watching for 10 minutes. He ain't going to change. Some of you ain't going to change. Pat told me. He led a few squatters in here. I can't believe it. How many was there? Six of them? About six? A few. <laughs> Don't be a squatter. There we go. All right. Strategic acceleration. There's a book. Here's the deal. Let's get to the methodology. I've coached all these guys, the presidents, everybody in the world. Big deal. Who cares? Okay. So here's what you care about. All right. All right. On your notes, in your book, draw a little stool, please. On the left side of the stool, write the word clarity, please. One to ten. How clear are you and where you're going this year? Clarity. One to ten. How clear are you? Ten's high, one's low. Write it right below the stool leg, please. Next one's focus. Right down, focus in the middle. You want less low leverage activities and more high leverage activities. One to 10, how focused are you? Next, execution. How well do you take action? Are you gonna be a squatter or are you gonna take action? One to 10, how well do you take action? Everybody talk to your neighbor about that. 30 seconds, real quick. Mr. Eric, be glad to sign your book. What's your takeaway so far? Um, I have a lot of homework to do. Get my focus. To be what? A lot of homework to do. Yeah. One thing I noticed about people that win, they make decisions, they study what they made decision on, they become the best at it, and they focus and take action. That's right. Focus, focus, focus. 
Look at him. We got some energy going. First name? So I felt like you kept passing me by. And I'm. Um, You're going to get it, right? And I said, I'm just going to go get that. Guy. <laughs> That's right. Now, the other one is to give away. So okay. Sure I'll open it. Going. Open it. Okay. Good. But it's all right. Sir? It's good. We're going to be doing each other a lot. Good. 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 I love helping people. Okay. Five seconds. Four. Three. Two. One. Where did I leave my copy? Zero. Okay. You can only vote once. There's three choices clarity, focus, execution. What's the one thing you need the most? How many need to be more clear? Clarity. clarity. Look around the room. About 20% on clarity, maybe 15%? No, 20 on clarity. How many need to be more focused with your time? Wow, maybe 40% there. How many need to take action, execution? Maybe 45 or 50 there, okay. All right, let's go. All right, so here's the answer. Take a picture of that. Strategic acceleration is about clarity, focus, and execution. You gotta have all three of those to really be the best we can be, in my opinion. It's my opinion, okay. Beliefs, the best model I've ever seen in the world. This is not the prettiest model. This is not a model of somebody uh, that stands up and then does a runway, runway deal. This is a model of learning. The way you speed learn is with models, right? How many of you think the cash flow quadrant is a cool model, right? Uh, a friend of mine invented it by the name of Keith Cunningham, a uh, very powerful concept and ended up giving it to Robert. Um, Powerful concept, powerful cash flow quadrant. Here's a model, the best model I've ever seen in my life. Here's the way, here's the way it works. There's anybody on the left, here's the world on the right, between you and the world is a window. Number one takeaway of everything I'm saying today is right here, guys. One well, window and the red dots are principles. I didn't invent the model, the model's been around for a long time, I helped start making it popular about 12 or 15 years ago when I started publishing it in my books. I didn't invent it, someone else did. Here's the way it works. We all filter life through our window. And what's on our window are truisms or principles, which we get from our, where? Starting with our, our upbringing and our parents. Would you agree? And as we're going through life, where else do we get our principles? Teachers, friends, books, videos, and all of us in here are doing life the best we can based on the principles in our window. Now watch the screen. Sometimes our principles are wrong, inaccurate, outdated. Let me explain. Did my parents teach me orange juice was good for me? Oh, yes, son. Orange juice is good for you. I believed it was good for you. I never drink orange juice now. Maybe three glasses in eight years. It's so bad for you. The GI, the sugar content, it spikes your insulin and makes you fat. Why in the world would you drink orange juice? I mean, maybe if you're doing a marathon and you needed to spike your glucose, right? Those of you that are, that are runners, there would be certain times maybe. Like, but my parents are like, no, orange juice is good. Dumb. I got fat drinking orange juice and all kinds of dumb stuff that has high GI. Let's keep going. How many of you grew up with sticks and stones or break your bones when names will never hurt you? <laughs> oh, let's talk about that one for a minute. Do you think what someone says to you can pierce your heart for life? You bet. You bet. What you say to your kid. What do I call my kids? Champion. Cheerleader. What do you call your friends when you bring someone into your organization? Do you find a name for them and give them a name and compliment them in that name so they live up to that, being exceptional, right? What you say to people matters, right? How about this one? How many of you grew up you should always clean your plate? Well, that's a dumb one. How many of you still feel guilty when you don't clean your plate? Look around the room, that's because you got a dumb principle on your window. Like if you're sharp, you go, I'm about to get full, take the plate away, your digestive system kicks in, you then get full and you have better portion control. Would you agree? Guess what? If you still feel, if you still feel obligated to clean your plate, Change it. It's a dumb principle. Here's the deal. You are not going to be as exceptional, in my opinion, 
is Rob Flick at recruiting and attracting unless you get the right principles. Think about it. Whenever you see him, watch what he does. He has this hot list of 20. He has the 20 people that he's targeting to think about bringing in to his life. The dude is unbelievable in the way he thinks. How many were in Mexico with us when we did that deal about a year and a half ago? Was that a cool experience? Yeah. I remember he and I sitting up at the beginning of that day, and we had computer problems. And we had a beautiful team there getting everything fixed up. We're there an hour and a half early. So when the show began, we fixed it, and the show began. Guess what? You show up early. My team's down here early today, getting everything ready, double-checking everything, making sure. What's the principle? Be there early. Have I ever been a minute late to a gig? Not in 33 years, 54 countries. Why? My principal says, I show up on time. I rent a plane, a train, a helicopter, whatever it takes. I get there. Don't show up late. Am I late? No, I'm not late. I'm here. Did I come with energy? Yeah. Would I want to party a little bit more last night? Yeah. But I need to be ready for you. Did I have an obligation? Yes. I need to pour energy into you. I made an obligation to Randy. I made an obligation to Gene. I made an obligation to, to Rob, to Randy, to Pat, right? To Angel, to Michelle, right? For all of you guys that showed up, maybe some of you showed up for me to be here. I needed to be able to pour into you. And did you want me to just get up there and go, yeah, 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 let me tell you how good I am, slide, slide, slide? Or did you want me to help create an experience where you get it and you go, hey, the dude's talking to me. He's real. I was fat. I was embezzled. I was divorced. I've had it all, all the problems, right? All the pro I haven't had cancer. I'm very, very fortunate not to have had cancer. Well, actually, that's not true. Everybody has cancer cells. But they have cancer growth where it's a problem, right? Okay, let's keep going. FedEx truck. When you see the FedEx truck, how many of you see that little spoon or that little arrow, right? Most people don't see it until someone points it out. Would you agree? It's like all oh, your life. Well, actually, since 1991. That's when it came out. Leader gave it to Fred Smith. We don't see things. We have blind spots. We go through life, and if you have blind spots, you are not going to be an exceptional parent. If you have blind spots, I got three incredible families that have poured in my wife and I's life to show me mistakes they made with their kids and the good things they made so that my wife and I could look back and not have regrets with our kids. I wanted to go out and ahead of it. When I got in this business, what I do is start sh sharpening and understanding about people that were doing what you do to recruit. So when I'm training, I understand the real deal. What did I encourage you to do last night? When you meet someone in network here, ask them how, they, how come they came into business and where they came from. My opinion is if someone came from 100%, and you want to know what they thought, then you need, and you've never been in a 100% deal, you need to know how they think. What did Gene say? Be real. I believe real tra trumps perfectionism. Do you agree? Being real. And you can become more real and speak to people in recruiting, I believe, if you understand their frame of reference. Did they come from KW? They understand recruiting, being compensated for recruiting. If they didn't, they really don't. Maybe. Is that true? If they, if, if they come from Codwell Baker, how many from Codwell Baker? Right? You come from luxury homes. I mean, wherever you came from, if you understand that when you're talking to somebody, you can speak to the world, not just your world. And how many need to listen more? Like how many people don't listen enough, right? Remember my mistake I made. I mean, I made a lot of them not listening. So powerful. Okay, blind spots. How do you deal with blind spots? There's six things. I'm giving you the book on it. One is mentors. Two is to pay a coach. If you don't have a coach, if you're not paying someone to pour into your brain, you're probably not going to be as sharp as you could be. How do you get a good coach? You make sure of three things. One, your coach has values that match your values. Number two, they have a toolbox to help you do what they say to do. If they go, go do it, and they don't give you the tools, then it's harder. If they give you the tools, it's easier. Would you agree? And the third thing is they have contacts. Like if they got contacts, they can make a phone call and make stuff happen for you. That's cool. Would you agree with that? Okay. Next one is trusted colleagues. How many of you are tapping into each other as well as you could when you find out what's working for somebody? I constantly be understanding best practices. A paid advisor is just like a CPA you pay. I, and I, don't, I don't mean that in a down way. I paid my CPA happily for 28 years. Uh, I was on the text with him this morning. I think everybody, I mean, how many is going to read the 3.9 million words in the IRS code? Like, you want to go do that? Nah. You want to pay someone to show you what to do. I mean, I got 15 jillion tax returns I file. How many like file a jillion tax returns like I do, right? You want to really go study the IRS tax code? Nope. You pay someone for their expertise sometimes. Uh, resources or videos, books. And you can't really see your own blind spots. What you can see is patterns. If the patterns are working, keep doing them. If the patterns are not, make a change, right? Okay. So our beliefs impact our results. How are we doing so far? All right, we already did this. What percentage of the time are we doing, which is tactical? What percentage of the time are we thinking strategic? Remember that? 
This is the doing over here. This is the thinking over here. So number four is balanced strategic IQ. Number five, ready for this? Number five, here's the big one, clarity. You gotta be clear. Remember what uh, that guy wrote the check, what was his name? The funny guy that I showed you the video? Jim is so freaking funny, isn't he? Wrote the check, carried the check around. Like when I was 17 years old, I wrote a goal to become a millionaire. I framed it, hand typed it, put it in my bedroom, worked it every day. Four years later, I was a millionaire, right? How'd I do that? Because I put it in my brain, right? What'd I do? Four years later, go broke. That was dumb. What'd I do? Put it in my brain. <laughs> Got to build it again. 1990, 1982, guy comes up to me and says, Tony, I'd like to give you $5,000 for four hours of your time. I'm making millions. I'm like, the 5,000 is no big deal to me, but my ego. What do you want? You want to talk to me? Come on over. Bring me that check. That's pretty cool. He's a top CEO now in Dallas. He comes over. He's like, I said, what do you want to do? He's like, man, you know how to make money. Would you show me how to make money? Sure, I'll show you how to make money. I go over and do my flip chart thing. He's like, oh, this is great. Hands me a check for five grand. I was like, now that's special. If you can talk and make money. Four and a half years later, I go broke. I'm like, what would be incredible to do? Like you can print money, which is pretty cool. I do that. But besides printing money, what would be the next best thing? By the way, who needs some more money? I haven't been giving away enough. Sure. Who Who is wanting a dollar? Where do you want one? I mean, I get away more money, right? That's a beautiful smile, a dollar for you. You were wanting one, weren't you? Yeah. And by the way, when you get the money, take the George, and when you rub the George on the paper, see how the ink rubs off? It's because of the money smell. The money smell, it takes about two days. Maritza puts it on there and she sprays on it, and to make it just right, you gotta wait two days before it's dry. But it works the Coke machines right away, okay? Right? All right. <laughs> just trying to be real. Okay, now what was I talking about? Clarity, I had a point. What was it? Oh yeah, so I was going broke. So I step back and I go, self, what would be an incredible way to have like, watch this, you could have a job, you need to write this one down, nobody get a pen. You could have a job, you can have a career, or you can have a vocation. And a vocation is when you're in your God-given talents and you're loving every day. That's the best. And I said, God, I want to be in a vocation. And I said, what would be a vocation for me is if I could talk and make millions. And I said, I gotta learn how to talk. I got a very fortunate opportunity to be on a speaking tour at 28 years old, 40 cities. I was terrible. It was bad. <laughs> Thousand people, Seattle, Washington, people were pointing at me. Like, and they were walking, I mean like probably 200 people out of the 1,000 left before I finished. And they kept pointing and laughing. I'm thinking, my pants aren't in zip. I'm not trying to be funny. <laughs> Do you remember the old overhead projectors? I had my slides upside down for 30 minutes, <laughs> speaking to upside down slides to a thousand people. Now that's bad, right? But I had self-esteem. Because I'd made money and I had self-esteem, I knew uh, where I wanted to go. How many of you know where you want to go with EXP? And you gotta have the courage, and you gotta have the confidence, and you gotta have per perseverance, and you gotta have delayed gratification, and you gotta recognize that sometimes it takes a little while, right? It took Rob a little while. When I joined him, we started going boom, right? It takes a little while. Life takes a little while. And so what I, so what I suggested for me is I said, what I'd like to do is talk for a living. And I like to either talk in, in video, talk in books, or talk in person. So that's what I do every day. And what I like to do is impact people's lives. I'm hoping I'm impacting your life today. God's given me a lot of ups and downs, and he's put me in a great platform because of those experiences. Because I can speak to know what it feels like to be broke. Because my parents to file bankruptcy. I mean, I got... Like all kinds of stuff. And how about this? Well, it's so cool, too, to have 57 books, and I own most of the rights. I didn't sell them. I sold Simon Schuster. I sold a few of them. I had 16 publishers. And then I started figuring out if I own my own books and I own my own rights, then I can give them away. Like if you go do a deal, like my course with Success Magazine, I can't give you that because I have a partner, and I think you should go check that course out. It's a very powerful course for 300 bucks. But most of, the th most of my IP I own, and I can give it away. When, I, when I've done a deal with somebody, I have to respect whatever the deal is I made with them. Okay, so clarity. Clarity is about being really clear and you get that pulling power. It's not just traveling, you're, you're rarely arriving. You just gotta like pulling power and guess what? You go as far as you can see and you gotta make adjustments in life. Change is interesting, isn't it? Change is interesting. I love my house. I love my estate, I love my setup. I've invested 21 years having the most incredible property you can possibly build. I mean, I have air conditioning that comes down the walls. When you sit in a, in a couch, you press a button, and air conditioning goes on your back. 
or heat coming out of the brick wall. Like, who does that? I got a sand volleyball court. My daughter trained for the Olympics. That is the most perfect sand volleyball court you could possibly make. And my wife and I said, she said, after we raise the kids, she wants to split up the, the business deal. And so I'm building her a condo. She gets the condo, and I'm building my office, right? Clarity. 20 years ago, we made the deal. We're doing the deal, right? Okay, clarity. That's what we can see. So clarity pulls you. Remember, focus. The number one thing about focus is there's a lot of distractions, and if you aren't clear on your HLAs, like what are your high leverage activities, make sure you read that chapter. High leverage activities, I have five of them. I'm gonna give you my story that just drills it. Your first name is Terrence. Let's play it out, Terrence, here we go. Terrence calls me up, he says, Tony, I'd like to have lunch with you. And I go, well, is having lunch with Terrence a high leverage activity? Terrence says, where do I have lunch with? I said, well, Terrence, what's up? He said, well, you know Tracy, don't you? I said, yeah. He's like, I'd like to have lunch with you, and if you could, I'd really like to have you connect me with her. And I go, hmm, well, Tracy's a friend of mine. Could I just email connect you? And Terrence goes, cool. He thinks to himself, I really didn't want to have lunch with you anyway. I just wanted to meet Tracy. Now, how many of you really say yes to things you shouldn't? In the book, I develop an entire chapter to how to say no. I said no to his lunch, but I gave him what he wanted. You can say no to people and give them what they want. But a lot of people don't have that on their window. And they say yes, and they end up burning 15 and 20 and 30 hours a week in low leverage activities. And guess what? You convert 80% of that to high leverage activities, are you going to make more money? Are you going to recruit more? Are you going to sell more houses? Are you going to be a better parent, friend, colleague, be healthier? Would you agree? Like a lot of people waste time because they aren't clear on their distractions. You got it right there. To close that gap, you got to focus in on your high leverage activities. The HLAs, that's what really matters, your HLAs. Close the gap. So number six, document your HLAs. I got a couple more videos and we're going to finish. Uh, Pat, I'm thinking, where's Pat at? Uh, was I scheduled, Pat, to finish at, Angel? Pat? I was scheduled to finish at noon, right? Uh, can I go five more minutes? I'm going to go to 12.05. Is that all right, guys? And then I'm going to autograph, right? And we'll do some cool stuff over lunch. Just watch. i got a couple more videos that I want to play out and make sure I give a good closure, okay? Here we go. Number six, number, the last number seven is execution. Here's the point here. There's three points, actually. Uh, one's your presence, which is your brand. Two is how you persuade. And three is what you say to yourself. And I'm going to bring that to life here real quick. And then we'll go to closure. Okay, strategic presence is your brand. If you're not strategic about your brand, you should be. Like, you have a brand personally? Like, what do your kids look up and say, here's my mom or dad, what do they say about you, your brand? What do your clients say in your community about you as a realtor? What do your colleagues say that you've recruited into EXP? You have a brand, would you agree? So be strategic about your brand. Damon endorsed my book. It's so cool, I got a, got a text about two years ago, year and a half ago. Hey, you're on Shark Tank. My friends, I'm like, no, 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 I'm at a wedding. Oh, you're on Shark Tank. I can promise you I'm at a wedding. I know where I'm at. And they endorsed my book, uh, which was really cool, as one of the top six books right up there with Think and Grow Rich. If you hadn't read that book, I can't give it to you because I have a deal with Simon & Schuster on it. You should buy the book. You can download it for like eight bucks. called uh, Life is a Series of Presentations. Instant bestseller, powerful book, great, great book. Since that time, since the time that book came out, I've come to believe that life is also a series of persuasions. And uh, I believe like in testimonials, I believe in cheering people on. Let me give you a couple videos here. Here's one about testimonials. Do people do what other people do? Everybody say yes. Check it out. The gentleman in the elevator now is a candid star. These folks who are entering, the man with a white shirt, the lady with a trench coat, and subsequently one other member of our staff will face the rear. And you'll see how this man in the trench coat <laughs> tries to maintain his individuality, but little by little, he looks at his watch, but he's really making an excuse for turning just a little bit more to the wall. Now we'll try it once again. 
Here's the candid subject. Here comes the candid camera staff, three of them at least. And uh, this man has apparently been in groups before. <laughs> Here's a fella with his hat on in the elevator. First he makes a full turn to the rear and Charlie closes the door. A moment later, we'll open the door. Everybody's changed positions. <laughs> now we'll see if we can use see if we can use group pressure for some good. Now, in a moment, on Charlie's signal, everybody turns forward. Notice, they take off their hats. And now, do you think we could reverse the procedure? Watch. People are happy, they love connecting. They think better, would you agree? Like how many of us need to smile more, have more gratitude, be thankful? There's a lot of crappy things that happen in life. Think of the good stuff. What are your blessings? Write it down, have fun. Okay, here's my last video. Should, do you get more of what you appreciate? Play this one out. Is there anybody in the room, and I wanna see a show of hand, of one single person who's ever gone to your spouse and said, I'm sick and tired, actually I'm pissed off, because you appreciate me too much. <laughs> Anybody ever get upset with your spouse for appreciating you too much? How about your kids? Do you get mad at your kids? Quit appreciating me so much. How many of your colleagues, your friends, your associates, your assistants, like everybody craves appreciation. And guess what? Most of us don't give it enough of it. Like how many of you are texting your kids of the things you appreciate so that they are doing more of that? Not just, yeah, hey, have a good day, I love you, not bad. How about, I really appreciate the way you're taking care of your car. I really appreciate the way that you're really saving. I really appreciate the way that you're whatever it is. Here's a video, my last one, 40 seconds, called Cheering Works. Check it out. Oh, you're not just gonna walk away and give up. Duck. You can get that. That's yours. Nobody else. Get in there and give it some heat. Give it some heat. Get it some heat. Get in there. And you get it. You go in there, Mary. And you don't get it, Harley. You get it. You get it. Get it. That's the one right there. You get it. Yes. All right. Yeah, baby. All right. I got five minutes to close, and I got a couple things left. All right. So here's what we got to close. Number seven, constantly improve your persuasion ability which includes how you attract, okay, how you attract. You know, I was gonna write a book on procrastination, but I never got around to it. <laughs> I did get the title done, you wanna see it? It's called Do It Later, The Ultimate Guide for Losers. And that's all about being a squatter, right? That's what I just talked about. Here's what happens. Some of you in here are already great. Greatness is the enemy of mastery. Here's the way it works. Oh, go ahead and take that picture, that's a good one. There's your summary page right there. Would you go to your phones, please? Would you write down Tony Jerry VIPs? VIP stands for very important points. So create a header in your phone. Tony Jerry VIPs. Please. Please write this down. Make it in a task area, a notes, Evernotes, wherever you take notes. And then would you write down your four or five takeaways? I've invested an hour and a half of my life with you. You got some ideas? You saw them on video, you saw them on screen, right, Randy? Today, some of you heard me six times, some twice, some the first time. What are your five takeaways today? What are you gonna do to think? What are you gonna do to take action? What are you gonna do differently as a result of our time together today? What's your takeaways? Give me five, look at your notes, think through it. What'd you hear, what'd you think about? Are you gonna be more clear? Are you gonna become more? Are you gonna pour into your kids more? Are you gonna make yourself healthier? Are you gonna attract more? Are you going to be more focused? Are you going to quit wasting time? I mean, my stuff's simple, right? Did I, did I say anything that you go, oh my gosh, this guy's freaking brilliant? 
You say that at all. All my stuff just best practices. Company after company after company have done this for 30 something years, looking for ways to help people be better. What are you going to do differently? Maybe it's goal setting. Maybe it's pouring into people. Maybe it's not eating, maybe it's not drinking orange juice. <laughs> maybe. What are you going to do differently? Do you want to be in the good column? Do you want to be in the great column? You want to be in the mastery column. See, a lot of people stop right there at greatness. And guess what? Some people, good's good enough. Some people, Jim said it, Jim Collins said, go to great. I say go to mastery. That's what Rob wants me to help everybody do is move here. Right? The enemy of mastery is greatness. Is great good enough for you? All right, tell your neighbor real quick what you're going to do. Your point. It's great to reflect and understand what your successes are, what your best practices are, so you can share those with others and constantly keep learning as well. Would you agree? All right, everybody wave over here. We'll do one pick here for us. This is a social media pick. Everybody wave over here. Thanks, mate. Thanks, man.